this is a show that uh, looks at the work of the German architect Frei Otto, um, winner of the Pritzker Prize later on in his career, uh, probably best known for the Munich um, Olympic Stadium. Um, but this show actually takes the occasion of Otto having taught at Yale in 1960 doing a structures course um, to look back at his early work and in particular his methodology. Um, he was uh, a, he was very invested in um, research as uh, the way to find form and to develop architecture. And he uh, initiated um, around the time, around this time in the 60s, uh, a series of ex experiments and groups to work with. Um, they then were also very savvy about creating a series of publications that were known as the IL, the Institute of Lightweight Structures Journal. Um, our exhibit actually relies heavily on those journals and they come to us from the archive, uh, the Fried Auto Archive in Karlsruhe. Um, George Rakliotis is the director of that, um, that institute and also um, the curator for our exhibit. Um, we take a look at um, not just the work, but how Otto was working and also how he was documenting, analyzing, and disseminating. Uh, one of the framing elements for the exhibit is this collage wall. Uh, it shows the covers of um, all 40 issues of IL. Um, and you can see uh, the way that each one would concentrate on a specific topic. Uh, adaptable architecture, tents, uh, pneumatic structures. You can also see uh, examples of some of the kinds of experiments that were included in the publication. The exhibit is set up uh, as a series of tables that are modeled on the uh, workshop of Fredo um, and the kind of the services where he would build models and, and record and measure uh, the experiments that he was doing. Um, each table uh, has a focus on um, a type of research, much like the IL publication itself, which would um, have a topic per issue. So at this first table, we have uh, a variety of photographs of Otto and his team at work. Um, and you can see the way that he was using uh, models and photography, um, both as a way of documenting, but also as a way of measuring the actual work. Um, there's examples of putting models in wind tunnels, doing uh, upside down wire hanging models that were then photographed in a specific way to help map out the resulting structure. Um, here you can see uh, a large wire model uh, being worked on by one of the teams. Uh, so this table actually looks at the development of a tent structure um, that Otto built in the early 60s. Um, one of the things that's notable about this is you can actually see different ways that um, this form was explored, both with uh, wire models, using um, soap bubbles to create minimal surfaces, then translating that into uh, um, tissue and thin uh, membranes. Um, you can also see the way that photography was used by projecting a, uh, a measurable grid onto these complex surfaces before there were computers, they were able to actually track um, the, the uh, precise shape uh, that they were developing. Um, you can also see how he was working on the ideas in collage, and then this is a photograph of the final tent. Uh, so at, at this table, you can actually see another arc of the way that uh, models and form-finding methods um, would then later result in uh, actual construction. Um, starting with uh, this, this picture of a spider web as an inspiration, um, you can see how his team was working in uh, sometimes very rough models um, that then would gradually become more sophisticated. Uh, he would look at, simultaneously at the structure, at light studies, at material capacities. Um, and then we see uh, a, a more developed model of this concept, and then a final construction model of what was the German uh, 
Pavilion at the 67 Expo in Montreal. So uh, this, this table um, actually shows some of the different ways that Otto and, and his team would uh, develop ideas for um, structures and forms. Again, we have um, some inspiration from nature. Um, you can see a series of studies that he was doing with uh, sand and the way that uh, sand would um, both fall when it was um, dropped from above, but then also the way that different uh, shapes would fit together and find their angle of repose. Um, these would then sometimes be translated into wood contour models, drawings, and kind of exploratory sketches. So this table concentrates on the topic of pneumatic structures. And you can actually see a lineage from some early studies with soap bubbles um, and the way that they congregate and form. Um, here, those soap bubbles are starting to be developed into uh, concepts of very large pneumatic structures, some that might uh, contain entire cities. Um, these are models of plaster casts that were based on some of the soap bubble studies. And finally, there's a wind tunnel study of one of these pneumatic structures at the scale of a, of a city. Uh, so this, this table actually focuses on a uh, publication that Otto did in 1959 looking at adaptable housing. Um, and it's really remarkable in the way that he, uh, some of his suggestions and concepts are just now finding their way into the built world. Um, they're, is um, a series of structures that allow for um, user-driven design. Um, and probably most interesting is the series of towers uh, with cantilevering platforms um, that is very reminiscent of work that you would see um, about 10 years later uh, among the metabolists um, and even with very contemporary architecture that's going on right now. So the IL publications themselves are actually quite rare um, and uh, delicate at this point. Um, for the sake of the show, we've actually um, created a series of reproductions of some key issues. So you can really get a sense of how um, they would take on a topic, in this case, um, net structures, and show um, the development, the sort of breadth of the concept, and then uh, leading to um, key explorations, um, even um, calculations and technical information. So the show culminates in a series of videos that we had produced um, that flip through all of the issues of the IL publications um, so that you can really get a sense of um, the, uh, what was included in this work and um, the depth of uh, the explorations they were doing, showing the ways that not only was Otto um, exploring, building, but he was really trying to form a community of people uh, by sharing his ideas.